And turning back to our top line, the decline of capital spending in Canada's oil patch. Kevin O'Leary is joining me now. He's the chairman of O'Leary Financial Group. Kevin, good to see you. Great to be here. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, Wood McKenzie, for our viewers who might not know them, um, very reputable. A lot of people read and believe in their work, and they are calling for a significant pullback in global energy spending, and, and Canada really uh, suffering probably the most. I think the one area of the report they didn't touch on but I think you can find it ingrained in what they're saying, is they're not critical enough on, on provincial policy in Alberta regarding this situation. And I'll, I'll tell you what yeah. I mean by that. Yeah. As an investor, I'm speaking now. Um, in a time when the commodity goes through its cycle, remember, in my view, and this has happened over decades, every seven, eight years you get a commodity correction. It doesn't touch the size on the way down. That's happening on oil. We'll probably retest the low 40s again. Okay. When that occurs, government policy should be very accommodative. In other words, you cut back royalties, you cut back corporate taxes, and then you put mechanisms in place during that period where you can claw that back in good times. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the politically responsible thing to do. On this cycle, due to a unique set of circumstances, we have a, a government, uh, it happens to be the NDP, but it could be any government mm -hmm. making this mistake, where they're actually not declaring what they're going to do at all. Mm -hmm. So you have the additional uncertainty. You don't know what they're going to do. They've said most recently they're going to raise royalty rates. At this point, that would be insane. Mm -hmm. You would have to not be involved in the energy sector to do a, to make a mistake like that. Oh, wait, I think the person running energy doesn't know anything about energy. Oh, my goodness. Right. What a shame. But that's the, what I'm pointing out is yeah. this is highly risky. So I think if, if you're looking at capital flows globally, and this report speaks to that, yes. the last place you would put money today is in a place where government's going in the wrong way and actually may not do what it's, know what it's doing at all. Mm. And so I'm extremely critical of mm. the policy layer on top of the situation we have in commodities in Alberta. Mm. It's created so much uncertainty that it's now the last place money will flow. And that's a bad mistake. It, well, it is. But Kevin, it, it, what I'm hearing then from you is you think that uh, it, it's almost as though the Wood Mac report is almost too conservative. I agree. I think, you know, they're a very reputable firm. They know what they're talking about yeah. here, and they're going to be correct. I just think you haven't really focused enough on what's going to happen specifically to Alberta. Mm -hmm. It is going to be the last place capital flows until the government says, here is our policy, here right. are the royalties. In the meantime, smaller operators will probably leave the province, put their headquarters somewhere else. Mm -hmm. The longer this uncertainty exists, the worse it gets. I can't believe this is happening. I remember talking... It's talk happening almost in slow motion. Don't I, you find... I remember saying to you the night we found out th that this new government change had yeah. occurred, that this was a a horror movie. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's worse than I thought. It's the worst horror movie I've ever seen. I'm still mm. scared. I'm really scared. Are you? And why? we haven't what? got to why? What, what? Why are you scared exactly? Because nothing's happening. All we have is a complete grind to a halt of capital mm -hmm. and no policy. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. Look, if you want to raise corporate taxes, raise them. If you want to raise royalties, raise. Oh, that would be insane to do that. But at least tell me as an institutional investor, what you're doing. Right. Instead of just going radio silent on this, studying the situation, you want the place to just shut down first? Right, well, I mean, but some people would say... By look, the way, I'm highly critical if you hadn't noticed. <laughs> no, but some people would say, look, we want them to have a little bit of time to, to make sure that they understand the story, to understand the different dynamics at play, Kevin. They, and there, there is, there why, is because that. they don't know anything about the energy sector? Because they pick somebody well, that then, doesn't have any experience in it? take the time. What do you, there is no time. There's no time. It's time to move. They don't need time. They're just killing themselves out there. I feel very badly for Albertans. I really do. What about the rest of Canada, though? Listen, you that's a little, for the rest that's of a mini disaster happening there on its own. Okay. And now for the rest of us, we have to adjust accordingly. Mm -hmm. I'm a little nervous about the policy to drag the Canadian dollar down so hard, and we have an additional risk. We have a political risk. Let's say, for example, the NDP got a federal mandate. That's three to four cents off the Canadian dollar that evening, hmm. in my view. It's a mm -hmm. personal opinion. But the world's going to look at a tax and spend agenda, tax and spend mandate. In a slowing economy. In a slowing economy would yeah. be a horrible outcome. So I'm, I'm hopeful that's not going to occur. And I'm, and I'm agnostic to politics. I'm just saying I don't care who gets elected. That would probably be a bad outcome. Even a coalition between... I, I guess I would call it an evil coalition between the Liberals and the NDP. And I, again, I'm agnostic. I don't care. It doesn't sound like you're agnostic. No, I am. I'm agnostic this way. I don't care what government gets in. They have to realize the new environment we're in. We're no, we're no growth.
right. you know, growth. So what do you do? If, if, if you're you a new cut, government coming you, in here, what do you do? You, you That's start, the new normal. You stop promising a tax and spend mandate. You, you become like a family in Canada, has to be. They've got to be very careful about how they deploy their capital. Mm -hmm. They can't waste it because they have no growth metrics. Right. And no we wage have, inflation for the There's zero wage right. inflation. And then you have to realize this too will pass. I'm extremely optimistic for our country. Mm -hmm. We have this trading opportunity developing in Hawaii. Right. We could end up at the high end of that scale. We just have to kind of guide the country through this rough patch, mm -hmm. which could be three to four years. It's Energy. A long time. I see no relief in the price of oil. I think it's going to trade in that 40 to mm. 55 range for years to mm -hmm. come because there's a lot of capacity still. There's right. a lot of shale yet to pull out. Yep. I'm nervous about that, but we too can adjust our economy. And this low dollar should give us for goods and services and certain mm -hmm. you know, industries like tourism a real boost in the next two years. Right. It's getting the policy right in Alberta I'm most worried about it, right now. Yeah, getting it right right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if I, and I think that's what we need to see. Get that government motivated to put policy in place, mm -hmm. whatever policy it is. If they raise royalty rates and raise corporate taxes, that's a mistake too. But at least you know. Right, you know the rules of the game. Exactly. And the CEOs, people who make capital investments, spending exactly. decisions. Exactly. That's, that's why I'm highly critical. I'm highly critical. Because we don't have anything we yet. We don't have anything yet. And I thought by now we would.